Hello, this is Stuart Taylor and welcome to lecture number four, Defining Threats and Risk Management. Risk management is the process of identifying, assessing and prioritizing risks and threats. A risk is an event that hasn't happened yet. Risk management seeks to establish the likelihood that an event will occur and to establish the potential impact on your organization should that event actually happen and to define what action should be taken if it does. Risk management also seeks to eliminate risks where possible and to minimize the impact of a risk that can't be totally eliminated. The risk management process usually starts with a risk assessment. Risk assessments should be made in two key areas, threats and vulnerabilities. The sources of potential attacks on your information systems in terms of threats are things like virus attacks, distributed denial of service attacks, malicious damage, possibly by disgruntled staff, natural disasters and so forth. Vulnerabilities, on the other hand, are specific flaws and or weaknesses that could be exploited by an attacker. So for example, bugs in software, servers that remain unpatched, out of date firmware and hardware flaws. It's important that all of your threats and vulnerabilities are identified. It is an ongoing process and risk assessments must be carried out regularly. This is because the nature of risk changes regularly. Sadly, there is always something new to worry about. And if you don't regularly reassess your risks, you might leave yourself open to an attack. Once your risks are identified, you should evaluate each one based on two criteria. The likelihood of the threat happening and the impact on the organization if the threat came true and did actually happen. A simple risk matrix can help with this. As you can see, I've created a simple risk matrix here with three simple risks. And in the example, we're using the likelihood multiplied by the impact to give a total score for each risk. By doing that, you're able to prioritize your risks. We can see here that poor patching has a likelihood of only one and an impact rating of two. So one times two is two. The total score for this risk is two. Out of date antivirus software, the likelihood is two and the impact is three. Two times three is six. And legacy wireless encryption has a likelihood of three and an impact of three. Three threes are nine. So we now have an idea of the order in which we would should tackle uh, these three risks with legacy wireless encryption being the, having the highest priority followed by out of date antivirus software and finally poor patching. Each risk should have an owner. Now sometimes this could be the head of information security, it could be the head of information systems, the chief technology officer or it could actually be somebody who's um, not in IT at all and a part of the business. But whoever the owner of the risk is, it should be identified in the risk matrix. You may wish to also consider recording which of the three core security principles are affected by the risk, whether that's availability, confidentiality or integrity. And each risk should have a status, whether it's open, i.e. it's being worked on, or whether a solution has been approved or whether it's been closed. This is a simple example of a, ri a risk matrix and some organizations have documents that are highly detailed, much more detailed than this example. Sometimes though it's better to just keep it simple. 
A word of caution about impact. The value of assets does not always mean the financial value. A failed web server may cost $2,000 to replace and there would be associated costs such as downtime, lost revenue possibly. But what about your brand? What about your reputation? It is very difficult to place a value on intangible items such as these. Having identified and assessed your risks, you're now ready to choose from four generally accepted responses. These responses are risk avoidance, risk acceptance, risk mitigation and risk transfer. Risk avoidance is where you stop doing the activity that is causing the risk. You may decide not to buy shares on the stock market as that there is a risk that the stock will drop in value. However, avoiding a risk usually means that you also avoid the potential reward that it offers. And to be honest, risk avoidance is rarely a credible option. Risk acceptance is where no countermeasures are put in place because it's not cost effective to do so or there would be an unacceptable and unavoidable delay involved in implementing the countermeasure. Sometimes the amount of time, effort and money required to mitigate a risk actually far outweigh the impact should the risk happen. In this case we might prefer to just accept the risk and deal with it when it happens. Risk mitigation is where an appropriate countermeasure is identified and determined that will hopefully eliminate the risk or if not reduce the risk to an acceptable level. Risk transfer is where a risk is assigned to a third party. Commonly this could be an insurance company or a supplier. Now it's very common to insure against risk but it's also very common to outsource IT security to dedicated IT security experts. There is another term called residual risk which refers to the amount of risk that remains with you if it has not been possible to totally eliminate it. In summary, this lecture has covered the process of risk management the difference between a risk, a threat and a vulnerability, risk assessment, an example of a risk matrix and four generally accepted responses to risk. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.